Long before electricity, before machinery, and even before the modern fertilizer industry, farmers had a secret partner working unseen beneath their fields, the earthworm. When early observers like Aristotle called them the intestines of the earth, they weren't exaggerating. Worms shaped the soil, recycling waste into fertility, creating channels for air and water, and making possible the agriculture that fed civilizations. Charles Darwin himself devoted his final scientific work to earthworms, proving that without them, fertile soil could not exist. Yet attracting and keeping worms is not just a curiosity of history. It remains one of the most practical, timeless skills for anyone tending the land today. The question then arises, how do you draw worms in and keep them multiplying in your soil? It turns out the answer is simpler and more natural than one might expect. Across centuries, farmers, gardeners, and homesteaders notice patterns. Worms appear where the soil is moist, where mulch is left undisturbed, where organic teas seep into the ground, where native leaves pile up, and where cool shade provides refuge from the burning sun. These five conditions form the foundation of worm-rich earth, and they remain as true now as they were on the first farms of Mesopotamia or in the colonial gardens of America. Moisture the first invitation. Worms are creatures of moisture. Their bodies breathe through their skin and without dampness, they suffocate and die. This is why earthworms are often seen after rains, rising to the surface not out of preference but necessity. Historically, farmers knew that well-watered soils held more worms. In fact, old agricultural handbooks often emphasized irrigation not just for crops, but for maintaining the worm life of the soil. Moisture is not about drowning soil, it is about balance. Worms thrive where the ground stays evenly damp, not soggy and not bone dry. In regions with clay-heavy earth, moisture lingers naturally, which is why some of the richest worm populations are found in old river valleys and floodplains. Conversely, sandy soils dry too quickly, driving worms away unless constant organic matter is added to hold water. For anyone today who wants to attract worms, the lesson is timeless. Build soils that hold moisture without suffocation. This often means adding organic matter like compost or leaf mold, which act as sponges holding rain and dew at the root level. Even shallow trenches filled with organic waste in ancient gardens serve this purpose. Where moisture remains steady, worms gather, and once worms arrive, their burrowing further improves water retention, completing a cycle that enriches soil year after year. Undisturbed mulch, the shelter above. If moisture is the invitation, mulch is the welcome mat. Farmers of the past may not have used the word mulch in the modern sense, but they knew that leaving crop residues, straw, or forest litter on the soil brought life. Worms thrive under coverings because mulch offers darkness, food, and protection from predators. Historical accounts often describe peasants layering straw in their fields after harvest, not simply to rot, but because it kept the worm. Mulch creates a microclimate at the soil's surface, cooler in summer and warmer in winter where worms can feed in safety. As they pull bits of mulch into their burrows, they enrich the earth with organic matter. In some regions, farmers deliberately grew cover crops like clover or vetch, and then flattened them to create living mulch that worms would quickly colonize. The principle remains unchanged today. Disturb the mulch with frequent tilling and worms vanish, leave it to settle and they appear in droves, Worms are not only eating the mulch, they are transforming it into castings, nature's most balanced fertilizer. Every handful of dark, rich soil under an old mulch pile tells the story of worms at work, a story repeated on homesteads for centuries. Fermented teas, the invisible feast. Beyond physical shelter, worms are drawn to the chemical signals of decomposition. Fermented teas, liquids made from soaking organic matter until microbes multiply, have long been used in traditional farming practices, though under different names. In Korea, rice wash water and plant ferments became part of natural farming. In Europe, manure teas steeped in barrels were poured onto fields. Though intended as fertilizer, they also created worm-rich soils. Why? Because these teas are loaded with microbial activity. When poured onto soil, they seep into the ground creating zones of intense bacterial growth. Worms, attracted to both the moisture and the smell of microbes at work, move in quickly. Their diet is not simply dead plant matter, but the microorganisms breaking it down. In other words, fermented teas are worm banquets. Modern gardeners who apply compost tea, bokashi lichate, or even simple grass ferment water are unknowingly continuing this tradition. The effect is immediate. 
Pour such a liquid onto dry, lifeless ground and within days worms migrate toward it, drawn by chemical cues we are only beginning to scientifically understand. This practice, ancient in its roots, offers a reminder that feeding soil life with living solutions is far more effective than sterile, chemical fertilizers. Native Leaves Nature's Own Bait One of the oldest observations in agriculture is that earthworms love leaf litter. Forest floors, untouched for centuries, are often teeming with worm life precisely because of the steady fall of native leaves. Farmers of the past recognized this, gathering forest leaves each autumn to spread over fields. Colonial writings in America often describe the use of leaf mold as fertilizer, prized not only for its nutrients but for the worms it attracted. Not all leaves are equal. Worms show a strong preference for the leaves native to the ecosystem they inhabit. In Europe, oak and beech leaves were favored. In Asia, mulberry and bamboo litter played a similar role. The reason lies in balance. Native leaves carry the right blend of carbon, minerals, and microbial communities suited to the local worms. Imported or non-native leaves often decompose more slowly or contain compounds less palatable to worms. For modern gardeners, this means the simplest way to attract worms is often to return leaves to the soil rather than burning or hauling them away. Piling autumn leaves over a bed mimics the natural cycles worms have followed for millennia. By spring, the pile shrinks as worms and microbes process it into humus. In that humus, both plants and worm populations flourish. The last factor is perhaps the most overlooked shade. Worms are, you know, intensely sensitive to heat and light. Direct sun dries the soil surface and worms retreat deep underground, often too deep to contribute significantly to soil fertility near plant roots. But where shade persists, under trees, along hedgerows, beneath tall crops, worms remain near the surface, constantly mixing organic matter into the soil. Historically, farmers noticed richer soils at the margins of forests where shade kept conditions favorable for worms. In many cultures, hedgerows and shelter belts were planted not only for wind protection, but also because the shaded, worm-rich soils at their base enriched adjoining fields. Even in arid regions, shade structures like trellises or interplanted tall crops were used to provide relief, indirectly boosting worm activity. Today, gardeners can recreate these conditions by using shade cloth, tall companion plants, or strategic tree plantings. By keeping soil temperatures moderated, these methods ensure that worms stay active near the root zone rather than disappearing into the depths. The principle is ancient, but effective. Cool the soil, and the worms will come. Attracting worms is not about fascination alone. Every worm tunneling through the soil is an engineer of fertility. Their burrows create drainage channels that prevent flooding and compaction. Their castings contain a perfectly balanced mix of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and micronutrients, far more plant-available than raw organic matter. Over time, worms can turn barren fields into productive farmland, a transformation witnessed repeatedly in agricultural history. Darwin himself calculated that in Old English meadows, earthworms brought up as much as 20 tons of soil per acre each year. Imagine that, an entire field being slowly tilled, aerated, and fertilized, all by silent creatures working in the dark. This is why farmers before modern machinery valued worms so highly. Their presence meant fertile fields, their absence meant decline. Moisture, undisturbed mulch, fermented teas, native leaves, and shady cover. These five conditions have attracted earthworms for as long as humans have worked the land. They are not inventions of modern science, but observations carried forward through centuries of farming wisdom. When present, worms gather in staggering numbers, and with them comes the renewal of soil. To attract worms is to align with nature's oldest system of soil fertility. It is not about adding more inputs, but about creating the right environment for life to thrive. Farmers of the past knew this instinctively, and we too can apply it in our gardens and fields today. If this exploration of hidden allies beneath our feet has deepened your appreciation for history's wisdom and nature's ingenuity, subscribe to In the Beginning and share this video with others. There are countless forgotten lessons in the soil, waiting to be rediscovered, and together we can bring them back to light.